And welcome to our online event, Social Media Madness Made Easy, with Joan Peltzer of Joan Peltzer Media. And Joan is also our Over 40 Females National Social Media Strategist. Couldn't do it without her. So we will bring her on in just a few minutes. And we will also be taking live questions, and I'm going to tell you just how to do that at later on, but right before we start. But in the meantime, I'm Judy Goss, the founder of Over 40 Females, and I'm sitting in for Shannon Bednowitz, who is the online community chapter director, and I'm thrilled to be here for our monthly online event today. We've started having many, many more online educational teleseminars every week in 20-minute breakout sessions. I know a lot of you have attended. Thank you so much. And our one today is a monthly online event. It lasts about 45 minutes with a raffle prize and everything at the end, valued at over $130, and member introductions, just like the Connect Live events that thousands of women across the country are attending every month in person. So please visit our calendar on the website for a full listing of our educational offerings and continual events, over40females.com. Okay, just some brief announcements and quickly about who we are. Over 40 Females is a nationally acclaimed live and online networking community specifically tailored for women over the age of 40. Yay! Providing resources and professional and personal development, inspiration, and support. You know, when I put this company together, I always wanted it to be different from just any other business networking company. So here we are, connecting, encouraging, and inspiring. And our raffle today is a beauty bag by Soraya Brazil. Toji Fulips and Tilt Beauty, worth over $130. And we're going to announce the winner at the end of this event, so please stay with us till the end to see if you won. Okay, we're constantly getting our members noticed and in the press. We're very proud of that. This is Julia Klein from the Chicago chapter on her own segment with NBC featuring her book. Helen Powers from Connecticut was booked on her own segment also and on NBC. And Jerry Stengel from New York was on ABC Eyewitness News. And we're, like I said, proud of the fact that we're constantly getting our members so much recognition for the businesses, and not just on TV, but in every form of media out there. Okay, I want to mention to you a -a one-of-a-kind free event for those of you who are thinking about getting your MBA. You really can't miss this. It's in New York City and Toronto um, in September, September 12th and 20th. September 12th, it's in Toronto. September 20th in New York City. It's the QS Women in Leadership and it's, they're not only looking to give away almost $2 million in scholarships to those women that want to get their MBAs, but you can also meet some of the world's top admissions directors in person in one room. In one room. Who does that? I don't know. So please go look them up. Um, go, look, go to the link there on your screen to register now. I imagine this would be filling up really, really fast. So meet those top business schools and business school alumni. Maybe grab a scholarship along the way. Who knows? For more information, please visit over40females.com slash event slash top MBA event. Now, that's your, the link is right on the bottom of that slide. So, And if you, if you miss it, if you need to come back and reference this event at any time, we are going to archive it on the website. Okay, just to remind you about our online benefits. As members, please go, those of you who are members with us on the call, please go and log into the website for your many, many benefits behind the scenes. It's so important as we pick members out from what they write in their profiles to prevent to present for TV segments, press features, website features, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're writing a book about over 40 females, and we have a lot of other opportunities for you to promote yourselves and your businesses. So filling out that profile is mega important. And there you see Kelly Epperson. She's on our speakers board on our Chicago chapter, from our Chicago chapter, excuse me. Um, so go in there and fill out your profiles. Okay, let's see. We've... Um, Oh, the next time you're on Facebook, as Shannon wanted me to tell you, to head over to our Over 40 Females online community page and give it a like to stay included because she has a lot of announcements going through that Facebook and promoting profiles and, and all kinds of things out there. Really fun. All right, and What Women Want Talk Radio is another way to get your story or business promoted. The host is me, so obviously over 40 females get top consideration to be interviewed for What Women Want Talk Radio, and I am proud to say that we have over 30,000 listeners a month. Now, I don't have the new numbers. They're not out yet. I'm expecting that to go up, so I am very proud of that and want to get members on the show. We air live every Wednesday, 9 p.m., Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, and we actually have an event this evening, um, as a matter of fact, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, like I said, and it's about, it's the author 
of it's actually about networking tonight, relationship networking, and how to really grow and nurture those relationships. We have the author Michelle Letterman from Eleven Laws of Likeability, which actually her book Eleven Laws of Likeability became a Rutgers College course. So we're going to interview her and see how she does it, and some get some great great tips on networking. So that's what really what it's all about to stay out there. Okay, our locations. We have um, our current live locations, Connect Live locations. If you're looking for live events, you know, to attend our events in person, you can find out where and when on our website, over40females.com, under locations. And I think the location screen is probably up there. I probably need to um, refresh my screen here. But each location has events at least once a month. I know a couple of them have two and three events a month. So, of course, we invite you to join us here online every month as well. We are so happy to have you. Okay, and we wouldn't have all of these chapters without sponsors like Cappy's Travel. Cappy is a 100% women-owned business for 43 years. God bless her. Let's support her. If you need to travel, you can Google your vacation to death and book it online. But who's going to be there if something goes wrong? Hmm? <laughs> who's going to be there? Call Cappy next time you want to travel. She's adorable. Her number is 888-227-7975. It's right there on your screen. Okay, now I could probably go on and on, but the, probably the reason you joined us today is to learn how to navigate through the social media madness. Joan Peltzer is here to tell us how, and this is really important. Okay, if you have a question while Joan is talking, please press star 2, and we will unmute you to ask your question. Okay, so just know that you can press star 2 on your phone, and, and we can unmute you with live questions. And like I said, Joan Peltzer is the CEO and founder of Joan Peltzer Media. I met her just uh, probably about a, a year ago now, a year and a half ago. I am so proud of the fact that she is our national social media strategist. She has helped us really pump up those numbers and get the word out. So happy to have her here on the online event today. Welcome, Joan. Thank you so much, Judy. I'm so excited to be here again. I love working with over 40 females, and I love social media. So, um, well, you know what? You been... really teach us so much about it, and 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 I I feel like women over 40 really need this. I have my 11 year olds know more than <laughs> than I do about all of this. <laughs> They're constantly like showing me. I'm like, can, can you figure out this on Instagram how to do? Oh yeah, mom. Here, 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 here go. <laughs> so I'm glad that we have that. you. You got to love that. Well, you know what? You got to start somewhere. And my nine year old nephew, two years ago, is the one who actually put me on Instagram. So it's a learning experience for all of us. And some of us just pick it up quicker than others. But there's always something that even I can learn. I mean, I'm not an expert by far with regards to a lot of the details, I'm learning every single day. So I want to impart some of that wisdom to our community and so that they can grow and prosper as well. My tagline lately has been creating online relationships that lead to your bottom line. And I think it's really important because I feel like we really need to learn how to engage on social media so that we can really affect our businesses. So that being said, let's jump right in. Um, we called today's event Social Media Madness Made Easy because, as we know, everybody gets a little crazy when it comes to social media and runs to their 11-year-old or their 9-year-old or whomever it is. <laughs> I like to say that those folks can help us, but they shouldn't create our strategy. <laughs> so they certainly uh, but probably can't convert convert our social media to uh, sales. <laughs> there you go. Well, you never know. It depends on who our target market is. <laughs> uh, that's so true. Right that's before, true. You know. Right before we jumped on this, I had been doing a lot of social media to help promote the event, and I did some tweets right before. And one of the questions I put out there was, who's your target market and where are they online? And, Judy, we know who over 40 females' target market is, and we know where they are online. We know it's women over 40. Very uh, Many of them are entrepreneurs, but some of them are, are business. Some of them are corporate. And it doesn't matter either way. It's about women who are making changes and moving ahead in their lives. So we have a very broad but wonderful target market, and it's around the world now, which is fantastic. So yeah, here's a fun little slide on me. Um, I would love to give a shout-out to Alyssa Peak. She took my photo, and she recently did the New York City Over 40 Females event. She's fantastic. She photographs women, and she really does a yeah, great she's job. I know she photographed too. you. Yep, mm -hmm. she's fantastic, love her, and she really makes you relax and feel 
good about yourself. So I wanted to give a shout out to her because she is a member and a wonderful human being. So, so social media made easy, madness made easy. Kind of, kind of gets crazy. You've already kind of seen my background, and again, my tagline: creating online relationships and taking them to your bottom line, because that's why we're doing this. I feel today that unless you are on social media, you're leaving out a necessary infrastructure. I've worked with entrepreneurs, small and medium businesses. Uh, I have a whole bunch of not-for-profits I work for. Candy Leitner, who founded MAD, is one of them. I work with a UN NGO. And I'm also, I'm not only working with over 40 females, but I'm also president of a women's group called Femfessionals, which is just about female professionals. We do events all together all the time. I have a background in um, a master's degree in business, which helps me realize that it is about the bottom line when you really look at it. Um, so social media is a necessary infrastructure today, and I know many of us are on personally and professionally, and that's a brand, your personal or your professional. Judy, you are a, such a great example of this because you are seamless in your personal and your professional. They're one and the same, and it, people shouldn't be afraid to post things that they really are passionate about and that they really care about because your brand is you in a sense, especially if you're an entrepreneur. But even if you're in corporate and you're a speaker or if you're in corporate and you're in HR, your brand is who you are. You may have sideline, maybe you are a tattoo artist on the side, or maybe you like to go kite gliding on the side. That's still part of who we are, and that's good to see online, and it helps you be more authentic. So right now, well, thank there you are for about the compliment. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And by being seamless and authentic, you don't have to think about it. It just right. is who you are, and you can just be that person in every way, shape, and form. Um, so right now, around the world, there are about 3 billion active social media accounts. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. In America alone, 56% have a social networking site profile, meaning a Facebook, a Twitter, a LinkedIn. Those are the basics. Instagram, Meerkat, uh, Periscope, whatever else there is out there. And the age range is from birth in many cases and to death in many cases because there are a lot of social media profiles that are for unborn kids as well as families who have a deceased member who are using that to help promote maybe a charity or something. 93% um, of marketers use social media. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. It's one of the top ways to reach your target audience. How do we get recognized, followed, liked, shared, and engaged, which to me is the most important. And Judy, you and I talk about this all the time. I don't care if somebody has 100,000 likes. If they are not communicating back and forth, if they're only speaking at their target market, that's not really helping each, each of their target people. You really want to talk back and forth, get the communication going, and have that conversation so that you can actually take that conversation offline. So that's a let's good point. talk about yeah, and let's talk about some five real basics that we need to think about with social media. Where does your target audience hang out? Are they moms and dads who may plan events for their kids for lacrosse or Girl Scouts, and are they on Facebook in the evening? Or are they younger kids and they're on Instagram all day long or Snapchat? So you're figuring out who your target market is can help you figure out where they are. Content. I know Over 40 Females has a ton of content. We have members doing blogs and webinars and internally and externally. We have events. We have a ton of content. Is the content adding value to your target? And in our case, I do believe it is, and we enhance that all the time. How do we capture leads? Do we have a mailing list? Absolutely. We have an email capture list, so when they come to either our social media or our website for Over 40 Females, we get to capture their information, capture their leads, so we can communicate with them in another way, perhaps an email blast. How do we add value in other means? So meaning, what is that value that we're adding and where is it? Are we sending them an e-blast that's exactly what we've put out there already, or are we sending them an additional type of value? And I say for us, we are sending them additional value. We're sharing additional information and additional means. Judy, I'm going to, again, use you as an example. Sorry, but you're on here. So, you know, you do the radio show. You do blogs. You do TV segments. So that's all adding value to your core audience. 
then do we analyze if it's working or not? And if it's not working, or even if it is working, sometimes we have to shift gears. Um, Judy, you and I talked about this recently. We weren't doing enough posting at certain times of the day for our audience, and so we weren't capturing them. So we would look at that on a regular basis, and I mean regular basis, weekly or biweekly, monthly, if that's all you can do and take a look at it and see what's working and what's not working and adjust it along the way. Maybe you're not finding your target audience on Facebook and you would need to either adjust the content, adjust the time of day, or adjust the platform altogether. Then finally, we are going to take the relationship that we've created online, offline, because that's how we actually do sales. Even if you're selling a product, that product actually eventually ends up in somebody's hands. If it's a service, it could be completely online, but you're still communicating in a way offline. So one of the ways we do this is through hashtags, which are basically keywords in your industry. And how can you incorporate those in your messaging? For Let's give an example of the What Women Want Talk Radio. So for What Women Want Talk Radio, we've used the hashtag What Women Want. And then when we have individual folks on the show, we may use a hashtag social media or we may use the hashtag lifestyle or book publishing, whatever it is that relates directly to what's going on at the time. And hashtags can also be used for weddings. So I have friends who recently got married, Jen Morris. She married a guy named Drew. So their hashtag for their wedding was Jen and Drew say I do. And it was adorable. And it was a way for us to search for them and anything that came up about them. And it was a way for them to then see all the photos on Instagram, all the videos on YouTube that people posted with and about their wedding. Now, do hashtags get picked up in Internet searches? Yes. Uh, hashtags are phenomenal. Some people don't feel that they want to use hashtags very often. I recommend on certain profiles you use them more rather than less. So Instagram, you use more hashtags. On Facebook, maybe you'd only use two or three. And maybe you sometimes don't use any. But it's a great way the to be searched. Exactly. And it's a great way to be searched. I mean, I still think at least one hashtag should always be used. Twitter, we tend to use more. Instagram, we tend to use more. We're starting to tag and use them on LinkedIn as well. So by doing that, you're just helping be found a little quicker. Like I said, it's a necessary infrastructure. Let's use the tools that are available. So YouTube is actually the number, number two search engine. You can go onto YouTube and find just about anything. My niece wanted my dad to build her a dollhouse. She went onto YouTube and found a video, sent it to my dad, who happened to be on Facebook. So she messaged it to him through Facebook. He built her a dollhouse. Kind of cool. What? do you guys all think is the number three search engine? And Judy, I think you may know this, so you can answer it if you know it. What's the number three search engine? Um, I would say Bing, but I don't know. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I thought you Facebook. meant like searching, I thought you meant searching like um, outlets right. like Bing no, or Yahoo. Right, no, exactly. But Facebook has actually become a search engine within an, within itself. And oh, what's interesting it? is, yes, absolutely. What's interesting is Facebook is very internal, meaning that you can't search for Facebook posts on Google. You, however, can search for Twitter posts on Google. You can find tweets now on Google because a contract was just signed between Google and Twitter. You cannot do that with Facebook. Facebook is a closed system, and they do that for a reason. They want to get advertising dollars. They want you to come and search for what you're looking for within their platform, which makes them a search engine. So Facebook, we'll get to Facebook now. There are 1.3 billion Facebook users. It continues to dominate as probably the number one social media. It, people think it's going away. It's not going away. It's just getting more robust and their advertising is changing on a regular basis. Users are logging in lately at about five times a day. Good times to post would be in the morning before people are heading out to work, when they get to work before they're like getting their first cup of coffee, at lunchtime, at tea time, and then in the evening. Like I said earlier, so Judy, you have two 11-year-olds. If you're going to plan a Girl Scout event for them or a lacrosse game for them, chances are you're part of a group on Facebook where that communication goes back and forth. So Facebook mm -hmm. for moms and dads in the evening is a great place to target. 
So when we go on Facebook, what I like to recommend for businesses is that, or individuals as well, that you target pages. And here's an, I'm going to keep using Over 40 as an example because it's an easy example for our community to listen to. So let's say I want to find interesting information, third-party content on women entrepreneurs. I might search for Inc. Magazine, Fast Company, or Forbes Women on Facebook. Then I might comment on an article I found on that page and then bring that article back to my audience. So with over 40 females, I would go on to Forbes Women, make a comment, say, hey, this is a great article. We're going to share it with our over 40 females group or our over 40 females community. Then I'm going to share that back to my community with the same kind of comments. And that's just bringing the engagement back and forth, putting us in front of their audience and bringing their audience back to you. If you're hosting an event, we host events every day in Over 40 Females Global Community. If you're hosting an event, create the event on Facebook. There's no reason why. I created a last-minute event this afternoon on our group on Over 40 Females, but there are pages that create events every single day. So there is the New York page who created the Alyssa Peak event last week. There's the global page that posts events that are happening throughout the country. So a city-specific um, page can post their own events, and a global page can post everyone's events. And even an event is a webinar, so a webinar is an event. Anything that you can set a time and a date for is an event, and you can create it on Facebook, share it on Facebook, and invite everyone to come to it. And then you can That's track terrific. the thing. I've yes, seen your well. events that you post for us. It's really, really yeah. great. And it's a great way to find out who's seeing it. And if they're not seeing it, why aren't they seeing it and how can I reach them? So mm -hmm. Twitter's my next favorite. I happen to love Twitter. And Instagram is my new favorite, but Twitter and Instagram are pretty close neck and neck. The reason I love Twitter is there are so many people using it. It's so instantaneous and you really do have to be short and sweet. And the beauty of Twitter is that the more active you are, the more active you will be. Meaning that Folks will engage you more if they see you on there more often. And it is a 24-7 platform. Um, one of the industry leaders, Guy Kawasaki, he actually posts the same content at multiple times of the day and night because his audience is global. Someone in Australia may see it at midnight and someone in New York may see it at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's the same kind of content just kept getting recycled so that he reaches a wider audience. The fastest growing demographic on Twitter happens to be the baby boomers, the 55 to 64. And right now there are about 550 worldwide users registered with Twitter accounts. You can also do advertising through Twitter. Um, now, Joan, I just want like to remind people, earlier, uh, yeah. excuse me, I'm sorry to, to cut sure. you off. I just want to remind people that they can press star two on their phones if they have a question. I know I'm kind of interjecting with questions people may have already, <laughs> but if anybody has a question, uh, remember you can push star two on your phone and chime right in. That's great. You're probably asking what they're thinking. Yeah, so, probably. Which is what a lot of people <laughs> want to know. So as I said earlier, so tweets are now searchable on Google, which is why I push using Google, uh, using Twitter, sorry, much more frequently. I love Twitter. I love the instantaneousness of Twitter. I actually watched the presidential election when Barack Obama was uh, sworn, um, not sworn in, was voted in a couple years ago. I watched it live, but I was getting more information by watching my Twitter feed than I was watching the television, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's going to just keep happening more and more and more. But again, it's all about managing it. If you're going to be on social media platforms, you have to manage them. You have to be active and you have to watch what your reputation is. What you put out there is a reflection on your brand. So why don't you tweet someone directly? They may respond. We actually did this with a theater company that I'm part of, Algonquin Theater Productions. We tweeted the Yankees when we were doing a play about the Yankees a couple of years ago, and we got retweeted, and we got engaged, and we filled the house for those shows. It was fantastic, and it was so exciting as it was happening. We were like, wait a minute, the Yankees are actually retweeting us right now. So it was exciting. If Wait, you what did you do? Can you say that again? I, you, yeah. I, you lost me. So the play, the play that we were doing, the plays that we were doing were called the Derek Jeter plays. They were about the Yankees and Derek Jeter, and they were about to go into the playoffs for the World Series. So what did we do? We tweeted at the Yankees. So we used the handle for the Yankees, and we tweeted them all about the shows that we were doing, inviting them to come. They retweeted oh, fantastic. us. 
which was so exciting for all of us because the guys who wrote the plays were real sports fans. And so it was really exciting to know that the Yankees were actually posting about us. And we filled And the how house. did you find them? Did you put, the, like, Yankees in the search box? Exactly. Yeah, I okay. knew I planned it in advance. My strategy was, okay, we, gotta, we have to target people who love sports, and particularly the Yankees because that's who we're writing about. So we targeted them all the time, and we actually got some reaction, which was fantastic. And most of the folks who ended up coming to see the shows were sports fans. Which was even well, I just better. have to say one more example too, Joan, a real quick on tagging people, which means making your post and then putting at, you know, whatever the name is of who you're tagging. You know, we had um, one of our chapters uh, booked uh, five TV segments and a newspaper interview and a um, uh, an FM radio show interview just by tagging producers, anchors, radio show people in that area where our chapter was launching. And yep. granted, it took a lot of, of tagging and, and posts to get their attention, but good Lord, to be on TV, radio, and newspaper, you know, for a chapter launch in a small area, it was a small town in Pennsylvania, it really shows you that Twitter really does work that way. Absolutely. And I would encourage people, I talk a lot about the engagement. The engagement is a two-way street. It's not just about putting information out there. And I know firsthand what you're talking about because I do know that the folks engaged and meaning, they helped by sharing that media information back to their community. So it's a two-way street. You're sharing their information, they're sharing your information, and it helps everybody. It's fantastic. So LinkedIn. Here's a good question if anyone wants to come off and answer this. When was the last time you checked your LinkedIn messages? A lot of times today people are inundated with emails and they don't always answer you right away. If you sent a message to someone in LinkedIn, chances are you may get a quicker response. Not saying it's a guarantee, but chances are you may get a quicker response. Folks feel you're taking that time to address them directly. Now, of course, you, you want to be linked to them. You want to know them. You don't want to just randomly solicit people on LinkedIn. But you do want to reach out to people on a regular basis using all the means you have available to you. I check my messages every day. I don't always answer them, but I check them every day to see what's coming in. There are two new members who join LinkedIn every single second. It's really becoming the way to connect with the business world. There are now 380 plus million users. It's the 16th most visited website in the world and it's active in over 200 countries. So the mission is really simple, to connect professionals, to make us more productive and more successful. When you join it, you get access to people. It was started actually for tech jobs. That's actually how they started LinkedIn, and it is great as a job resource. So if anyone is looking for employment, that's a great place to search. And I'm working with someone right now. I did a, an event on Saturday for architects through my friend Tanya Adair of Splice Design. What we did was we talked about how to use social media to help these new architects find jobs. And they had someone who's a headhunter that was there who specializes in that field. She said the first thing she does is check them out on social media to see if their brand on social media will match what walks in the room. You just got a shout out, by the way, on Twitter from Kelly Trim. Oh, she's fabulous. From Atlanta. I'm, I'm yeah, in front of believe, Twitter, so I'm going to retweet. <laughs> yeah, I think she's our speakers board member. Um, down, She's on the speakers board down in Atlanta. And she said on live with Social Media Madness, over 40 females, loving it. You rock, Joan Pel Peltzer. <laughs> awesome. And I just retweeted her while I'm sitting next to you because I can multitask a little bit. <laughs> so, so, LinkedIn, so thank you. here Th are thank you, two Kelly. things. Yeah, thank you so much, Kelly, and keep it up. Follow, tweet, and talk to us. Talk with us. I shouldn't say to us, with us, back and forth. So here are some great points on LinkedIn. I want to keep it very simple. Profile picture. Please don't be an egghead. Do you know what an egghead is? That's where someone's got a little gray thing that's not a picture. Get a nice picture. Get a really nice picture. Post it. Don't get a picture of you with an ex-boyfriend, husband, whatever. Put a nice picture up. You are 11 times, that's crazy, you are 11 times more likely to get your profile viewed if you use a clear recent picture of yourself. There's plenty of ways to do that. You can take a selfie if you have to, but there's plenty of resources out there. Second, summary. 
a lot of folks forget to put a summary. The summary is not your experience. The summary is who you are, what skills do you have, kind of what you're looking for. I just helped my neighbor do her summary. She is a pre-med student and she's gonna to go to Marymount in the fall. She's looking to do a little bit of office work or medical assisting work. And so we put it out there. I had no idea she had volunteered for so many different things. She's been a volunteer medic with the Red Cross. She was a volunteer in the medical tent at the um, marathon last year. These are things that would be so pertinent in your summary so that people know all about you, who you are, what you are, what you represent, and actually how to get in touch with you and what you're looking for, especially if you're looking to connect to folks. Um, I recommend highly turn off your broadcast before you edit your profile. You don't need to send everybody in the entire world that you that follows you on LinkedIn each time you make a little teeny tiny change. It could be a typo or whatnot. Turn it off. Turn it back on right before you make your final change, and this way it broadcasts that you've made a change. LinkedIn, use targeted keywords. Again, like we talked about with the hashtags in the beginning, you don't have to hashtag them so much on LinkedIn, especially in your profile or your summary, but they are good to use those keywords so you're more searchable. Same kind of keywords you would use on a resume or like we said, like a hashtag. Um, it does have, LinkedIn is a search engine, so you can search for certain things based on the keywords that are out there. And join a few key groups on LinkedIn. Don't don't try and be overactive. If you're overactive, you're never going to do it. It's just like saying, I'm going to start a diet and I'm eliminating every single thing from my diet except lettuce. You're never going to keep it up. So join a few key groups and be seen as an active influencer. Judy, you do this. You join groups and you are actively participating as who and what you are as your brand. So that's a great way to be. Um, there's something called Pulse. Now on LinkedIn, it's been there for a while. A lot of people don't utilize it. It's an internal blog function. You can actually post your original content and be further seen as an influencer. I just started doing this with a divorce attorney in New York. All the content was written by him. He's had it for a long, long time. We started posting it, and he's all of a sudden getting between 15 and 20 eyeballs on this content when we post it. So that's really great. He's being seen in front of a different audience. Other social media platforms, you may have heard these, and I'd be curious who's using what. Periscope and Meerkat, they're like live streams, basically. They're not video, they're live streams, meaning the other day some guy walked down the street and he was filming me and my dog walking. And he said, oh, I'm doing this live on Periscope. Very cool. Um, you can then take that link and you can put it wherever else you want it to be seen. A lot of people are doing that for webinars and things like this. Google Plus, great to be found. It's still useful. It hasn't gone away. Pinterest is great. I was with a catering and event company. We sold a bride a wedding on Pinterest. Pinterest is very image heavy, obviously. Fashion, food, beauty, all things like that. Snapchat disappears. Snapchat is great if you're targeting a younger crowd or if you want to play around with it. Vine, short Vine videos are very useful. Flickr, Flickr is great for photos if you want to put up a whole bunch of photos. Vimeo is very similar to YouTube. It's just another version of a YouTube platform. If you're going to do a lot of video, I recommend you try out both because you can be searched in both ways. Yelp is great if you're a brick-and-mortar business or if you're a business that likes to get a lot of reviews. Uh, be careful on Yelp because when a review is put up, good or bad, it cannot be taken down unless it's I believe defamatory, um, there's a lot of rules, and there are no people that are saying yes or no to this. It's strictly an algorithm. So you could have the best review on earth, but if the person that put it up has never reviewed before, chances of it being seen is very, very slim. So make sure that if you ask for Yelp reviews, you're getting them from sources who have reviewed others before. Foursquare. I'm not really sure if Foursquare is for everyone. It's a very physical, so you're going to a specific place and checking in. So if you're a brick and mortar business, this would be great. Um, if you're not, it may not be as useful. It, I don't see many as, ma as many people using Foursquare as I used to, checking into different places they're eating or, or going. Meetups. Meetups are still great. Folks still plan events on Meetups. So if you plan an event and you put it on Facebook, put it on Meetup as well. Can't hurt you to have more exposure rather than less. Mind your manners. Be relevant, be timely, and please listen. 
don't just talk, listen. And the biggest thing, if I can tell you anything, is to be authentic. Don't try and be something you're not. Don't try and fake it till you make it because people notice it. People know. And there's so much noise out there that they will know if you're being authentic or if you're not being authentic. And they'll leave you if you're not being authentic. So try and figure out who you are, where you need to be, and how you need to be there. Content calendars are great. Um, when I was with the catering and event company, every single day of the year is a food holiday of some sort. National Hot Dog Day, National Boston Cream Pie Day. That was really useful to a company like that that could jump on the bandwagon. So you can use monthly themes. Um, dermatology, we could use a monthly theme of what do we focus on for the mouth? Maybe Botox and Restylane, but also maybe the mouth health. Are your teeth clean? Are you eating the right foods? Um, holidays and events, Christmas, um, Hanukkah, New Year's, those could be relevant depending on who you're targeting. Um, Kathy's travel, I would imagine doing a monthly theme could be really cool. End of school, it could be summer vacation, 4th of July. Holiday themes would be great for Kathy as well because people want to take vacations during the holidays. So President's Week, um, here's a theme for President's Week. Here's for Thanksgiving Week. And then relevant business news would be a great item to keep regularly on a content calendar. And I would love you all to socialize with me. So here are some of my social media platforms. Feel free to connect with me. I will tell you that I'm, I'm kind of strict on LinkedIn. I accept people only if I've either met them or had a conversation. And I have not met some of the people on my LinkedIn, but I definitely have spoken to them. I feel it needs to be an important and very vetted network if I'm going to use it correctly. Doesn't mean I don't have a lot of people, it just means that I do want to make sure that they authentically at least know who and what I am if they're going to be part of my network and seeing who are in my network. Love Instagram like I told you as well. And then now it's time for us to have a little chit chat. So if anybody has any questions, comments, um, you know, burning desire to know about Instagram, please do share. You can press star two on your phone if you'd like to ask a question. I know we threw a ton of information at you today. <laughs> and I'm pretty <laughs> so fast, probably, so. <laughs> probably soaking it up and absorbing it. Um, yeah, no, that was great. I think you've touched the basics of pretty much every social, every relevant social media outlet out there anyway. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm working right now with um, a – spray tan place on the Upper East Side called Bronze Boutique. She's my new client, and she's fantastic. And what we're doing is we've created graphics, and a graphics program that is great for folks to use is called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. And you can create your own cute little graphics from it and just keep yourself branded. So it's fun. We, that's how we actually did the very first um, slide that we did for Over 40 Females to announce this event, the purple slide. That was done in Canva. So it's a fun, cool program for folks to be able to use. Nice. Um, hey, Joan, we, we do have a question. Um, I'm Fantastic. going to unmute uh, Kelly Trim. Go ahead, Kelly. Hi. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Hi, yep. Kelly. Okay. Hi, Hi, Kelly. Thanks again for sh the shout-out. I, 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 I correct myself. You're not on our speaker's board, but maybe you want to be someday. <laughs> of course I do want to be. So I have a, a quick and – Hopefully a fairly simple question. It may not have a fairly simple answer, but um, sure. how do you how do you feel about these social media management tools like um, Hootsuite or TweetDeck? Oh, Good love question. them. Yeah. Love them. Love them. Love them. I couldn't live without them, to be honest with you. Um, I use a lot of them. I use Buffer. I use uh, Sprout Social. I use Hootsuite. I use my favorite is actually my friend's company. It's called Vbout, V-B-O-U-T, and that's a relatively new one, but it's growing. So I think that if you're going to manage your social media, you can't be on it 24-7. You have to sleep. So you want to schedule some things. Plus, it's also great for analytics to see what's going on. And it's great, especially if you're at an event. I use Hootsuite and Vbout whenever I do an event for a client. We can be live. I do it um, a lot with Judy when we do her radio show. I listen to her radio show, and we plan out stuff, and I want to get it all out there quickly, and I want to respond to people. So those are great tools. And if you need any advice on which platform may work for you, feel free to email me, and we can chat about that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We have another My pleasure. question. 
from um, Denise Hansard. Uh, you are unmuted, Denise. Hey, thanks, guys. Joan, that was great. And, of course, you just answered my question. But I want clarification. <laughs> <laughs> was that okay. V is in V belt? V is in boy? Yes. V is in boy, O-U-T. V is in Victor, B is in boy, O-U-T. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, and if V-Bow. We have, and if you need a connection, you can try it for free. If you need a connection, email me, and okay. I will hook you up okay. with my, my friend Richard who runs the company. Okay, sounds great. One question, though. If we're just – if we have a following and they're not responding or being as interactive until they see me in person – and they'll go, oh, my right. God, Denise, I love everything that you're doing. I read everything. Right. And I'm going, well, how about commenting? You know, right. how do we get them to comment more? Okay. Well, here's one way. Put something out there that's a little different. Um, a friend of mine, Allison Pena, she was going through a lot of um, personal issues. So she decided to put it out there every single day for 30 days. She got more play. It's almost like she went viral. She got more play from sharing that than she did from sharing anything else she's ever put out there. So not to say that, you know, it has to be anything negative, but if somebody doesn't feel you need them, they may not comment and respond to you. So give them a reason to comment and respond. Try and figure out a little bit of a different way to maybe ask a question or ask for advice. Sounds great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Please. Great. Thank you so much, um, Denise. And we're going to hear from Denise in a little bit as well during the member introductions. Um, that was it for questions. And if we want to move on to the, the next step, that'd be great. Well, so, thank you so much, Joan. Um, I'm sure a lot of other My people pleasure. have questions. And if you guys want to get a hold of Joan, um, what's your email again that you'd like them to email? My email is simple, info, I-N-F-O, at joanpelzermedia.com. JoanPelzerMedia.com. Well, thank you so much again. That was awesome. And if anybody has thank questions you. after this, please feel free to email her. And we are Appreciate on to our it. member introductions. Now, part of what Over 40 Females is about, really the kind of foundation of Over 40 Females, is connecting. So in addition to getting to know these members that we're announcing today, uh, these members will also be archived permanently on our website for everyone to see at any time they wish. So, Beth, do you want to take over with the introductions? Yep, we're going to start with Diane Beaulieu um, out of Illinois, and you are unmuted, Diane. Go ahead. Wow, okay. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Wonderful. So um, my name is, as you said, Diane Beaulieu. I'm the owner of Entree Kitchen. We are a full-service meal assembly kitchen located in the western suburbs of Chicago, um, about 45 minutes out of Chicago. And we're located in a town called Carroll Stream. I live in West Chicago, about 10 minutes away. So my commute to work is awesome. Um, so we provide delicious meal solutions. Um, we're a full service, as I said, meal assembly kitchen. So we do all the shopping, chopping, dicing, slicing for our customers. And then they ask to either make their own meals in our kitchen, uh, order for pickup, delivery. But really, the core of our mission is to help busy parents, professionals, and empty nesters enjoy delicious, healthy, home-cooked meals without all the work. And, Diane, what's your Twitter? Uh, it's yeah, Entree Kitchen. What is for it? For the business. And the, pardon me? What, what's the handle? For the business, it's Entree Kitchen. Entree Kitchen. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, thanks, Diane. Next, we're going to um, have Sharon Clark announce herself. Hi, I'm Sharon Clark. I My business is Healing For You, all words, no abbreviations. And I do Reiki, and I do Quantum Touch, and I do Chakra Dance. And I'm located in Cumming, Georgia, but I also work in other places in the Atlanta area. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we're going, we're going to go back to Kelly Trim, and I'm going to show your profile now. Hi, Kelly, again. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Kelly Trim. I am with an organization called FranNet of Atlanta. We're a local boutique consulting firm, and we help people transition, transition safely and affordably into business ownership. FranNet Services 
are uh, free to prospective business owners, and we provide experienced consultants who build a specific profiling and use a consultative process to provide guidance and knowledge about the franchise landscape and um, take a look at career options first, work face-to-face with you, and determine if franchise ownership is right for you. Wow, great. That's interesting. What's your Twitter? I'm trying to Twitter out. I can't keep up with it, but I'm going to try. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm, I'm at Trim, T-R-I-M, dot Kelly. Trim, P-R-I-M? Um, I got it. Like Tom, I can R- do it. Like <laughs> okay. Okay. She's going to help me. Joan's going to help me. Okay, great. great. Thank I'm you, Kelly. I'm going to totally help. Thank great. you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, just go back to Sharon real um, quick because I don't think we got her handle. Hi, Sharon. I don't have a Twitter account yet. I don't know how to use it. Okay. You need me. Um, <laughs> there you need go. somebody. All right. Well, you have the expert on the line, so you can reach out to her directly. Um, okay. All right. Now I'm going to be unmuting Becky Deutsch in Georgia. Go ahead, Becky. Hi. This is Rebecca Deutsch, and I'm an indep- oh, I'm from Marietta, Georgia, and I'm an independent con- consultant with Beauty Control Skin Care and Cosmetics, and I have a passion for helping my clients find their own unique beauty through our skin care, our cosmetics, our uh, anti-aging products and our image services, and also we have a great uh, business opportunity. So I do complimentary consultations. I do uh, business presentations. I do theme spa parties, and I love to do fundraisers. And unfortunately, I haven't used Twitter yet, so I have to get onto that, although I do have a handle, but I'm not really (laughs) very good at it. My handle is uh, Your Beauty. And B A U T I. Well, we're going to Twitter you out today, so that's a start. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Denise Hansford, who we heard from earlier, um, who had the question, and and you can go ahead, Denise. Great. Thank you. I am your life architect. I help you to build a very solid foundation, personally and professionally, and they give you the support and the tools in which to help you to learn to go live the life you were meant to live. So I'm Denise Hansard. I am that life architect and a professional speaker. And my Twitter handle got established before I knew what I was doing, and someone had already taken my name, but it's at Denise Hansard and then underscore. And Denise is a member. You're a member of our speaker's board. I am, yes. Yes, and you did a fantastic uh, 20-minute breakout session. So if anybody wants to go listen to it, um, it's on our archive. I, no, you did an online event, didn't you? Which one did I you did do? an online event, and I have spoken. I'm in the Chicago area, uh, even in though the Chicago my, reach area. Is, yeah, my reach is nationwide and uh, with the it world was, and my group of tribe and my list. Terrific. I love and it and when the I one did. you did for us was called Are You Fearless, right? Yes. Okay, great. And if anybody, like I said, wants to listen to that, you can go into our video educational library archive. Thank you. Great. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, my name is Cindy Baker. I'm a professional dog trainer in the coming area. Um, I focus on families, just good training for family dogs. Um, and you can reach me through Facebook or our phone or email. I do not have a Twitter account, and I would love to have one. Well, you know who to, to ask about setting it up. <laughs> Um, I do today. Now I know. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Okay. Well, that was terrific, and that's the end of our uh, member introductions. Thanks so much for being on the call today. And Judy, uh, you can wrap up. Do we pick a raffle winner yet? Okay. Uh, you know who it was? Was Judy Mines? Oh, Judy Mines. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Judy, if you're still on the call, which you need to be to win, um, please email info at over40females.com for your beauty bag worth over $130. And this is it today for uh, Social Media Madness Made Easy. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed yourselves and, and enjoyed the member introductions and the raffle and everything else. And we do have every week our online educational te- teleseminars that last 20 minutes. So go save your spot on our community calendar. All the events, all the teleseminars, all the everything that we do is on the community calendar at over40females.com. So have a great day, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us.